All right, guys, Eric here, Underdog MMA. We are here with Preston Parsons from the UFC. I've also got uh, Mike Trasto from The Merge. And so quick background on why we're here. So I watch every UFC fight. And when I this Saturday, the Preston was fighting. And I ended up sending Mike probably, what, three or four different videos of the takedowns that Preston was doing. And I do it on all the fights. And so I'm like, oh, check out this takedown. So I do one. And uh, Mike said, I need to make a breakdown on this. This is killer. And so... Uh, I said, we should get this guy on the phone and talk to this guy about his wrestling and stuff. So that's kind of the backstory of how this happened. So uh, Preston, glad you're on the, on the call today, man. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Hey, Mike, you want to kick it off? You got some questions? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess, uh, Preston, first off, right, um, for folks on here that know you, folks uh, that aren't familiar yet, just, I guess, give us a quick rundown of just like your background, um, jujitsu, wrestling, whatever it might be. Um, I, I started doing MMA when I was 16. Uh, when I was young, I was super into boxing. I, I wasn't even sure what jujitsu and wrestling really was until I was about 16 and my stepdad introduced it to me. Um, so I started with karate when I was really young and boxing in the, the garage with my buddies and my brother and uh, then kind of moved forward into wrestling in the front yard in the grass until I could find a good MMA gym to join. Okay. So it started at, started at that age and then obviously as time progressed, I mean, it was just MMA for what? I mean, the, the past eight plus years now just mixing everything together yes sir yeah I, i've done everything for the last 10 years uh, i didn't really i didn't wrestle in high school um that's something i, I wish i would have wow. done um i kind of started doing everything at once when i was 16 okay interesting well it surprised me it surprised me to hear you haven't wrestled in high school because uh so when eric sent me these clips i mean you're doing you're doing these great takedowns right and then on top of it uh i'm, I'm like a knee side a, a knee slide snob uh i always kind of I always preach about double legs when the guy's sprawling, knee sliding in, right? Getting your hips back in a good position. I always use the example of like, you know, your TP, your knee slide back in, your hips are back in, and you're finishing. Uh, and your fight, I mean, you did two perfect knee slides, right? Um, one of them, one of them to finish takedown, I get, I think, to get into side control before the head and arm. Um, but I mean, you haven't wrestled before, right? So obviously someone's teaching these things, you're feeling these things out. Um, I mean, do you have someone kind of working with you on your wrestling in the MMA gym that you're at? Um, currently I don't really have very many wrestling coaches. When I first started out when I was 16, um, uh, I had a lot of good coaches coming in and out of the gym. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my first wrestling coach was Caleb Pelletier and he, he was great. He was a uh, one state three times in high school and then he wrestled for West Point. Um, so him beating up on me for years and even getting in on his leg was a, a win for me back then. Nice. Yeah. And, and Eric, actually, we, we have a queued up already. Um, if you if you don't mind pulling up that uh, that knee slide. Yeah, video, I don't but... know if you can see this, but let me go ahead and uh, share this with you. So this was this was the knee slide. Yeah, well, we, 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 we could play it a second or third time if it's choppy. But yeah, I mean, this this is what really impressed me. Right. I mean, end of the day, you take the shot. Right. And, you know, he's he's kind of gets like a little mini sprawl going on. Um, and right around that right around that uh, that phase right there. Right. There, right. That's where he drives yeah. a knee in. Right. Yeah, drives it right through right there. And obviously that brings your hips back in, right? So when I first saw that, I'm like, all right, we got to do a breakdown on this guy. Um, I mean, if anyone's, you know, when, when folks want to watch this, this will be the first time it's kind of popping out a teaser. But uh, not this Friday, but next Friday, I'm 100% doing a breakdown on this knee slide because, you know, this is crucial stuff on finishing a double leg. This is crucial, uh, crucial details, um, you know, in the rest. Preston just does it automatically. He doesn't need to learn it. He just, he just automatically knew that that's what you need to do, right? No, yeah. I, I did do a lot of drilling on that. When I was, um, my wrestling coaches were always huge on having the hips in, not not reaching, not trying to lift with your back or anything. So um, if I am getting sprawled on, my immediate goal always try to get my hips back underneath me. That way I can either fight back up to the feet, wrestle back up, or finish the takedown like I did in the fight. So are you thinking when you're doing that? I mean, when you're in there, are you, are you thinking I got to get, or is it just automatic at that point? It's kind of automatic at that point. I um, we do a lot of drilling, uh, just kind of the same setup, just a jab to a takedown. Um, mm -hmm. So it, when I time it right, it's a little bit easier. Sometimes you can get the takedown with not much resistance. But um, anytime I feel like I'm getting sprawled on, I'm back up. Or anytime I shoot, I normally don't finish the takedowns for my knees like that. I was always my coaches are big on getting back to your feet, driving. Um, don't try to finish from your knees. But um, on that one, it just flowed pretty well uh, i wasn't thinking about it at all it was just get the finish on the takedown so it just sure. kind of went into muscle memory are, are you are you like looking to get that fight on the ground or do you not care where it goes like what's your what's your mind frame and how comfortable are you on the ground jujitsu wise and wrestling wise um I've, i'm pretty comfortable on the ground um obviously i don't want to be on my back in mma fight um 
which I was there a few times. Uh, but I do feel pretty confident and comfortable on my back if I do end up there to get the sweep or to catch a submission or at least stay active enough to um, not get elbowed or punched while I'm down there or submitted myself. Um, but in, in that fight, I, I was kind of flowing. It was a change of an opponent. Uh, I think I had four, five or four or five days to prepare for him. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I knew he was mostly a striker, and I did plan on timing my takedowns, but it, nothing was really forced in that fight. I was kind of just flowing. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think Mike added a clip here as well. Check out this one. This is, uh, what do we call this one, Mike? Is it the Hollywood? Oh, Hollywood the, uh, the, jo- the John Wayne sweep, yeah. Oh, yeah, John Wayne. Sorry, guys. That yeah, sweep yeah. is actually, um, when I first learned that sweep, it was Neil Melanson. He was doing a seminar at a gym that I, I trained at a while back, and uh, he was going over Dar's chokes from, from half guard and uh, kind of had to beat the underhook by punching your fist to the floor. Um, yeah. So anytime somebody has kind of like a, a half, not a great wizard, I can kind of catch that, that wrist, and I can try to elbow down and roll through on that sweep. Um, that one is, again, one I learned off of him showing what not to do when you're on top. Make sure you have a strong wizard punching it to the floor or that sweep could happen. And when he said that, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to start looking for that sweep. And I, I catch a lot of guys with it. You don't see it in the UFC that much. I mean, like a beautiful sweep where the guy is on bottom and gets on top. I mean, you see it, but it's 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 not as common as you think. Usually they scramble up and get out, right? But that was pretty impressive. I think you had two sweeps in that fight, if I'm not right. mistaken. I, if, yes, I, I think so. I think I made two or three, and I think it was that same sweep every time. Yeah, and yeah. I noticed uh, you got that one. What was it? I don't know if it's the beginning of the first or the beginning of the second. You got him basically well over your head on that one. Do you remember that one? You you shot in real quick, got really deep on his legs, and then I mean, you almost. I mean, he was. Oh yes, yeah, the beginning of the second. Yeah, I, I wanted to get a big slam on the takedown, but I didn't want to him to roll me through or create a scramble. I just wanted to make sure I mm-hmm. ended up on top. Whether it, it wasn't like it, it didn't matter to me whether I ended up in side control as long as I was on top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Now, now, when you're, because I, I also understand, I, I also understand you, you, you have your own gym, right? You have your own MMA facility. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so when you're, I guess, are there times where you're just training and rolling without striking, or are you like 100 percent on MMA all day? Like, do you ever just roll and, and train jiu-jitsu without strikes? I do. Um, I always try to see them. Uh, I, I like rolling with uh, the high level guys. So if there's a black belt in there, or there's a higher rank guy, and he's not an MMA guy, I, I enjoy all of it i, I love jujitsu. i love wrestling so um i'm kind of thinking about ground and pound all the time but mm. i do in, in, enjoy just just rolling without ground and pound do, do you think your style is different um from like you know from a jujitsu from a jujitsu perspective strictly if you're rolling at your school right um you know are you playing more guard are you is your is your game totally different than it is when like when strikes are involved because as you mentioned right in, M- in a mma fight you prefer not to be on your back i guess when you're just doing jujitsu is it different for you um no actually it's not because i'm when i am on my back i i try to play a very aggressive guard or aggressive game off my back so i'm constantly pulling the guy close to me trying to attack his, his neck or his arms um so i i don't do too much just laying flat on my back from any position if i can mm, okay. you're trying to scramble up to your feet basically every yeah time. scramble up or um look for a straight arm bar from guard I, I like to work a lot of underhooks so it keeps my head close to the body where i can't really there's not much space for them to land damaging shots Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I do, I, I think about the space and the ground and pound um, all the time when I roll. So are you, are you a fan of UFC? Oh yes. Yeah, definitely a big fan. Um, you, you lately I, I, have, I, I haven't been as much of a, uh, a fan as I, I was like, I'm, I haven't watched the fights as much as I used to, um, mm. it's been busy training. Um, uh, I kind of guilty of not keeping up with, uh, the guys lately, but my weight class, I do try to watch all the fights in my weight class. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, what's funny too is I have a friend who uh, teaches me Spanish in Chile, and he he I was sharing sharing him the fight with uh, what is his name Ignacio Bahamondes, and then I was going through and I saw that you fought him, and he's really good. And I know you have a victory over him probably a while back because I think he was like your second or third fight. But that guy's really good, and I noticed uh, I noticed that you had a victory over that. It's a pretty big deal, right? And in that fight, I, I was. It's definitely intent on getting the takedown. Um, if you do go back yeah, and watch that fight, track, I, right? Yeah, he's very good. And he had just come off a um, a big knockout with a head kick. Um, it was my first fight for Titan FC, and uh, which was a bigger promotion for me at the time. So I was definitely looking to uh, get a win, not a spectacular uh, knockout or anything like that. So if you do watch that fight, I I shot from about four feet away and uh, <laughs> got back to my feet and got the takedown. 
So hey, that's, that's where the knee slide comes into play right there. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's kind of how I got in. I shot, knee slid in, and got into the fence to lock my hands. Have, have they uh, told you who your next opponent's going to be yet, or are you guys still looking at that? They have not. Um, actually, during that fight, I, I broke my hand, so I'm getting surgery on Monday on my hand. Um, I try not to show it, but in the first round, I sat on the bench. I looked at my corner, and I was like, I think my hand's broken. Um, it, but it didn't, it didn't hinder the fight at all. It um, didn't hurt that bad either. It just I could tell hmm. something was wrong, and I couldn't really clinch my fist. So a lot of times I was, was going. When, when it, no, when it, I, I need to go back and watch it again. Hmm. Um, I want to say it was one of the ground and pound strikes, but it, it was my left hand. So if you kind of watch closely, you can see towards the end, I was kind of hitting with the, the, the knuckles on the inside opposed to hitting them with the actual mm. fist. And you're a righty? Yes, sir. Okay. So, okay. Probably better left hand than right hand, right? To break. Yes, no, absolutely. And I just, I had a surgery last year. I had tendon damage in my right hand on my knuckle. So I was, mm. I was out for three months because of that. And now my left hand, but again, it's a lot better now. It's my, my, uh, my left hand this time because I can still write and do all my normal stuff. Yeah. And so you said, so you have no organized wrestling experience. Is that fair to say? That's yeah, fair to say. Wow. Yeah. Very I mean, we were, impressive. we were getting on here like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, I was looking, I was like, where I was like, Googling it. Where did this guy go to call Where do you wrestle in college? Right. And then you're like, I didn't wrestle in high school. Like, how did yeah, that's, how did that's, this? that's one of the things I really wish I would have done. My, my stepdad is the one that kind of introduced me to grappling. Cause I, growing up, I was always a fan of like the Rocky movies. That's kind of what got mm -hmm. me into it. Um, yeah, me too. Boxing, stand up. But I, I didn't really know what jujitsu or much about wrestling. And my stepdad said, you need, need to wrestle if you want to be an MMA fighter. And uh, it was like, this is, if the guy doesn't know how to defend these takedowns, then it's automatic win. And anybody can throw a punch. Not everybody can grapple. And so, so what was it? What was that point where you're like, I, I want to be an MMA fighter? And you were actually serious about it. Was there, did you see something that caused that? Um, probably as soon as I started watching UFC fights, I, I was kind of hooked. I, I, I wanted to do it. I wanted to, um, I've always wanted to be a, a, a champion at something. Uh, when I was yeah. younger, it was uh, football. I like basketball. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was, I was kind of a little more nervous as a kid. So I was always afraid of signing up for the, uh, the school teams and everything like that. But, yeah. um, then I, I found a gym and I kind of found out what it was like to be training and be around guys that have similar goals and, um, it's just kind of grew from there. And, and so that's, so that's kind of interesting. So who was the big, like, who was the big popular, uh, person out there? Who was the champion at that time when you got into it? Was like GSP or. Yeah. yeah GSP was still fighting. Uh, Frankie Edgar was the 55 okay. champ. I was a uh, lightweight at the beginning of my career. So, um, I, I watched a lot of the lightweight fights. I was, uh, my favorite fighter was Joe Lozon. I loved seeing jujitsu work. Um, it, it was just cool to me to see guys winning fights off of their back and proving jujitsu works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And now I'm I'm curious to also understand like, you know, you you opened your like how long ago did you open your spot? Your your MMA gym? About 2 years ago. 2 years ago. Okay. So I mean, yeah, you know, right in the middle of COVID. Oh geez, yeah. So Perfect I mean, timing right there. I'd, I'd love to even hear about that, but you know, open up your gym, obviously, you know, fighting in the UFC now. I mean, I imagine you're, you know, your 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 schedule's packed, right? And I even heard you give a shout out to your girlfriend after the fight. So I mean, you got, you know, you got a lot going on, right? You got a girlfriend, you got the you know, you're fighting in the UFC, you got a gym now. I mean, how, how is it kind of balancing all this? Because right now, I mean, you're ecstatic to, you know, you're ecstatic to be fighting in the UFC, and this is a, a, an amazing opportunity, um, but there's a lot going on, right? Right. No, there's definitely a, a ton going on. I, I have a, a huge support system. I have a lot of, um, a lot of local fighters that help me out, um, a lot of guys that hopefully, and I'm pretty confident soon, will be in the UFC. So um, if I can, I try to get most of the classes covered at the gym. Um, have other people teach them, even if I'm, I like to still be there to kind of uh, help out. But right now I'm really focused on me, focused on my training, focused on um, uh, doing things right and opposed to coaching every single class like I was before. Um, but it is definitely a lot to juggle. And, but my main priority always is to make sure I get my uh, two good training sessions in a day. Um, and if uh, there's a certain game plan to work for an opponent that I make sure I spend most of my time doing that and you said you said that you were back to so you said you were fighting at lightweight at one point yes all my amateur fights i had uh, i was five and zero oh amateur and they were all at lightweight um in my first my first pro fight was a 55 fight second pro fight was 55 and i, yeah, I, the missed weight. Fight I think was 160 uh catch weight i think if i i, I thought yeah. it was a mistake when they they said it uh when i was in hawaii i met a guy i think his name is zach zane i could be wrong but he's a uh he fights at 155 and I saw him and he wanted to roll. And I was like, 
uh, I was sure he was like either a middleweight or a welterweight, right? And he's like, no, I fight a lightweight. I was like, you have to be kidding me. Like he is huge. I mean, you know, it looks like he's 200 pounds and you know, this is amazing. So when I heard, when they, when I heard that they announced you at 160, I was like, yeah, that must be some type of mistake. Right. Well, no, it, it, it was right. Yeah. I, 170 is not a super tough cut for me. Um, 55 kind of uh, scarred me for life not to want to ever try that again. <laughs> um, if they made that 165 division, that would be an easy cut for me still. And I could fight mm -hmm. at 165 all day, but um, right now, 170, I feel comfortable. I, I walk around probably 185, 86 while I'm in shape. So it's never oh, a huge nice, cut. Yeah. So I don't have to spend my, my fight camp stressing about making weight. I can focus on game planning and training for the fight opposed to stressing about cutting 30 pounds. And how's your nutrition? Uh, do you I mean, do you focus pretty close on that or is it cause the weight tough's not that bad? You know, how does um, that work? No, I definitely, I have a sweet tooth, so I have to kind of be careful. Um, and it hits me at nighttime. I, I do well during the day. Uh, my, my diet's actually kind of different than most people's. I, I normally fast until around 2 p.m., 3 p.m. every day, and then I'll eat lunch. And I don't like training on a full stomach, so um, I eat a light lunch, and then I'll train again midday, and then I'll, I'll stuff my face at nighttime right before yeah, bed. I do the exact same thing. I don't eat till later, and then I, I always have my – got to have my ice cream before I go to bed. It's, it's terrible. But, <laughs> yeah, I got a sweet – I always wonder because I know some guys aren't foodies, right? So they just eat like – they don't care what they eat. They'll eat just rice and chicken all the time, and so – cutting is never and then you see some guys in the ufc they'll get really big or especially post retirement right you see them uh, because obviously what you're doing to your body to get down to some of these weights is not, obviously not healthy right no exactly but uh, i'm my diet's pretty clean especially leading up to fights and in fight camps i um, eat a lot of vegetables uh, i'm not i don't ve eat very many carbs i kind of feel okay without them and if i mm -hmm. I, I stay away from bread and i stay away from dairy um, but lots of, lots of protein and lots of, lots of vegetables. Okay. No, that's good. Mike, you got anything yeah. else? What yeah, else I was say, that's a, uh, it's an interesting concept, uh, that you said about, about the intermittent fasting, right? Cause I actually do that, but I ran into the issue where if I, I get like a, a, a morning workout in and it's like pretty intense, I want to eat and like put something in my body. Right. But then I'm like, I don't want to break the fast. So I, I guess just, right. that's interesting. Do you, do you get a hard workout in the morning and then just, you just still don't eat until two? Yes. Um, every morning I, I, I run a lot. So I do, I do five, five miles every day. So that's the first thing wow. I do when I wake up in the morning, I run five miles. Um, I sometimes will lift after that. And then I have a noon practice where all of our pro and amateur guys come in and we do our, our training. Um, but I, I'll have a protein shake sometimes after I run or after training, but normally don't eat any actual food until around two or three, but I'm, I'm actually starting to try to not do that anymore. Um, and kind of eat, more meals throughout the day because for recovery and everything else. Cause I have noticed like I'm sore all the time and I need to kind of recover and on fight week, I normally not training as hard. So I just kind of, my diet changes a little bit. Then I'll eat breakfast, lunch and dinner opposed to not eating until lunch and dinner. Mm. Yeah. So now you have to like fuel. I mean, you really have to fuel yourself, right. Versus like your normal nine to five or whatever you can eat a cheeseburger where you actually have to go into and so how long are these sessions you said you do you try to get two solid mma sessions per day yes and they're about an hour and a half hour and a half two hours sometimes um depending on the intensity do you ever have to nap after your after your your first one do you ever do that if i have time i i try to i try to like set out a good 30 minutes every day and even if i can't get to sleep i'll just lay there with my eyes closed and uh, get up feeling a little bit more refreshed yeah. So th three hours of pretty hard training a day. Right. And you're doing everything, right? So you're doing, are you doing Thai boxing? Uh, yes, I, I do. Um, my schedule is kind of Tuesday, Thursday nights around six. I'll do, um, pad work with my, my striking coach cord and my partner. Um, and then Monday through Friday at noon, we have kind of our, our big practices where all the fighters come in and depending on the day, uh, we'll do wrestling drills. We'll do, uh, jujitsu rolling, starting off the wall, um, or we'll do sparring. Hmm. And what do you, I mean, what are your thoughts on kind of the personality piece of the UFC? Cause as you can see, right. I'll, general, just from my basic, uh, sense of you, right. As you seem very humble. You just kind of get to work, let your, let your work, uh, show itself in the cage. Right. But yet you see a lot of the hype, some of the bigger characters, right. That come out and really kind of, you know, push buttons or do whatever they got to do to really hype up fights. And then you see, what those those do numbers wise so like 
you know, what are your thoughts on, on guys that do that? And is it something that you see yourself could do potentially to like start getting into that kind of upper tier of, of kind of who's watching who. Right. Um, I, I'm not much of a trash talker. I, I don't mind when people do it to me. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to let other people engage at first before I go out of my way to say something bad about somebody. Um, but I, I, I can respond pretty well. Um, and I enjoy it. Love fighting. So, and I think I'm pretty good at it. So it's not, um, I, I don't mind when guys trash talk. Uh, it kind of makes it more fun for me, uh, more motivation to train. Um, again, I'm not a big trash talker myself, but no, I'm a huge fan of McGregor, even with all the, uh, the recent stuff that he's done and said, but, um, I'm still, still a huge fan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his attitude, right. He's a gamer and I mean, trash talking is the easy part, right? It's the showing up and the, the actually performing, but he is interesting. I mean, what I do like about McGregor is like, I mean, he'll go and like people go, Oh, well he he's faking about wanting to fight. Uh, what is it? Kamara Usman. I'm like, he's not, I guarantee he'd go in there if he could, he's trying to get that right. fight. And, uh, it is funny to see, but I do think he is a little bit of a light. He's, he's pretty light for uh, welterweight. You know, I mean, Kamara Usman's a big guy. You know, and right, that's who's yeah. at the top of your division right now. It's a right. And that fight, I I, I know I'm, I just got my first UFC win, but I've always felt pretty confident in a fight with Usman uh, versus really? myself. Um, yes, I, I think I would do pretty well. Um, stylistically. I think I, I think yes, exactly. Stylistically, he's I like watching Usman um, just because he, he wins fights with fundamentals. And that's kind of what I drill a lot, a lot of jabs, a lot of straight punches, um, fundamental wrestling stuff basic jujitsu stuff and just be a, a master at the fundamentals. And that kind of seems to be his style. Like he's a yeah. good jab, good double leg, good, good defense. Yeah. He's very, I think he's very cerebral. He's very simple, right? He doesn't try to do a bunch of really wild stuff, spinning stuff, but, but, uh, he does have pretty good cage work. I've seen, he'll really get those guys up against a cage. Even Jorge Masvidal said he couldn't get off the cage on that first fight. He just right. couldn't and move. He, yeah. So he seems very strong. I actually, I met him before I ever saw him fight. It was, um, he was doing the commentary for Titan FC mm -hmm. and, um, at a weigh ins he sat next to me and he had the knee brace on, I guess it was right after his surgery. And, mm -hmm. um, he, he introduced himself to me and I, I didn't really know who it was at first, but I don't remember him being very much bigger than me whenever he was sitting next to me. So he, he looks big on TV and like even going to that last Jacksonville event, um, April 8th, I think it was, that was my first time going to a UFC event. And, um, sat pretty close and it made me realize like these guys the tv makes everybody look huge yeah uh, but in person they're it's they're normal people they don't look that big and how tall are you uh 5 10 5 11 i tell yeah. people six foot sometimes yeah you gotta you gotta throw a couple inches on there i know my dad uh, met randy couture at an event and my dad's a pretty big guy and and he and randy couture was smaller than he was and he was like oh my god i couldn't believe i, I was thinking he was gonna be this giant right and it turned out to be like uh I think he's about maybe six foot or so, give or take, you know? Right. So I actually think that's really good that I, I, I like that you feel that you match up stylistically very well with Usman because, you know, I kind of always wonder, I think, right. You need to have that mindset that like, I can, I can be anybody in the UFC, right. Cause if you don't, right. it's like, what are you really doing there? Right. Exactly. That's, that's right. And that's, that's the, the fight I, I want eventually, like I'm, I'm in this for the long run. I want to be the, the welterweight champ. So that's, that's the guy that, I would have to beat right now. Yeah. And so as far as jujitsu goes, um, so do you, do you have a professor? How, do, how does that work? And like, um, do you have a belt? Do you use belt or is it only like strictly no gi? Like, how does that all work? I, I'm strictly no gi. I, I started getting belted a long time ago by Steve Hall um, in Charlotte, uh, but he's it's a, it's a long drive there. I got to my brown belt under him. Um, but I, I do have a professor now. He's the, um, the owner of Gracie Baja Jacksonville. And I work with him two or three times a week on, um, a little bit of everything. He does teach jujitsu, but he'll teach a lot of wrestling and jujitsu for MMA. Um, the way he puts it, he doesn't want me to be too jujitsu y, like rolling mm -hmm. for submissions, losing the top position, trying to jump on arm bars and stuff like that. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah the, well, the, the, it's, it's different in your world, right? I mean, I, I noticed in your interview as well, which I really liked, you were saying, like, hey, I, I, I forgot the exact quote, but it was, you know, I feel best when I'm you know, hitting every piece, right? When I'm well-rounded, when I'm doing, you know, not just jujitsu, not just wrestling, not just the striking, not kickboxing, right? It's like when I have everything kind of all pistons firing at once, um, not focusing just on one thing, that's when you kind of feel best, it sounds like. Yes, definitely. That's, uh, it makes it feel like a, a, a regular fight. It makes me feel like I'm not uh, stuck doing one thing and I, options, there's, there's a lot of different ways to win. Uh, 
So I, I, I love putting it all together. And I, Oh, go ahead, Mike. Oh, no, I was, I was going to say, so from the, you know, since we're on, back on the topic a little bit of just, you know, style or just wrestling in general, um, you know, folks that are going to be watching this and want to hear, I mean, because I, I'd be curious to, you know, your, your answer for this. How important is wrestling, um, you know, in the MMA community? So, A, so A how important is wrestling if you want to be an MMA fighter? And on top of it, in your opinion, what's the, like the number one takedown or a takedown you, no questions asked, you got to have if you're fighting MMA? Uh, got to have a good double leg. Got to have a good double leg, and you have to have a good sprawl. Um, but I think uh, wrestling is the, the number one for uh, MMA, I'd say. Uh, if, if you want to fight, I think you need to learn wrestling because if you wanted to go to the ground, that's how you get it there. Um, if, if the other guy's a good wrestler and you don't know how to defend takedowns, you're, you're in for a long night. Have you ever been... Uh... How, have you ever been against somebody who you felt like really dominated you in wrestling? Uh, you know, obviously like the way that could be kind of, uh, breaks people down. Have you run into that? Or have you always felt like your wrestling has been as good or better than your opponents? Um, in my MMA fights, I've always felt like I've been pretty competitive in the gym. My, my wrestling coaches would definitely have made me feel defenseless. Um, kind of broken me. Uh, that's, that's something you hear a lot. Uh, wrestling is breaking guys kind of mentally, and um, wearing them out. So, but I, I just try to take that and learn from it, try to do that to other guys because yeah, I've been broken before and uh, um, in wrestling, and I try not to let that ever happen again. And then once I know what it felt like, I was like, well, I'm going to do that to other guys, wear them out, break them mentally, and then do whatever I want to them after that. You know, with the interesting thing about Khabib, right, is, is that uh, I think they call it a wrist ride, but in uh, they call it the Dagestani handcuff in. Um... Dagestan or whatever right, is kind of the joke, right? Where they're reaching over and they're grabbing their arm and they're preventing him from getting up. Uh, I, I've noticed a lot of guys, like the things that Khabib did where he kind of gets uh, kind of that like bear hug and then he'll slam him back to the ground. I noticed that basically all the things that he's done over the last like three or four years, I see it getting implemented by guys across the world, really all different gyms. I see them doing the similar way of keeping their opponent down. Like have you, any guys that you've seen that you're like, I've watched that guy. I, I like what he does. I'm going to try to do, you know, implement some of that into my game. Um, Khabib, definitely number one for that. Um, and yes, there, there was one of my training partners, uh, Mike Pope. He, we used to call it Pope and a guy because he would take us down. Um, he would get top half guard, pass half guard, go to mount, make you work your butt off to get back to half guard, and then just pass back to mount, let you escape back to half guard. And the whole time he's just touching with little shots on the top and it would, wear me out, wear all my training partners out. So, um, he's, he, he's a good pro. He hasn't fought in a long time. I think he joined the military, but, um, he's made me feel that way many times. Yeah. So I, I think the tape is, I think the tape is huge and, and, and it's fun for us, right? We, we really, I mean, my, Michael's like, you know, I had him over here and he was teaching me wrestling and stuff. And I mean, th to me, there's nothing more beautiful than like a well-timed double leg right i mean I, i'm a big fan of george st pierre and he's similar to you right that like you're oh what's his like wrestling accolades and you're like what do you mean he didn't wrestle in high school like he's literally taking down the who's who of wrestling and he's doing it really well and i mean how um is it that like timing is just the main thing in there that you just really have to just completely catch him off guard to get it yes timing and um for me being comfortable ever and everywhere knowing that i can stand with the guy um really hitting him with some good shots to make him um, be less aware of the wrestling. So catching guys with good jabs, good, good, any punch or any strike, and then kind of making them think you want to stand up. And as soon as they start over committing to their punches, drop under and look for your takedown. So the, the setup's a lot easier in MMA for me than it is to set up shots in a wrestling uh, circumstance. Like um, get it, I, just wrestling. I'm big on getting steps, get the guy to step time his steps, go for uh, outside singles more. Um, but in MMA, I like to punch and get the guy to really want to commit coming forward to hit me and then dropping under his punches and, um, catching what I can double leg or, um, single, whatever it may be. And then just chain wrestling from there. Yeah. And I, I know, I know Mike has a couple more questions, but before we, we let you go, I wanted to know, so, uh, you having this wrestling background, what did you think of Hamzat Shemaev? What do you think of that guy? What do you think of his, uh, wrestling ability and, uh, just kind of the hype around, uh, what he's been doing? Yeah, and I, I just I watched his fight live. I, I think um, 
I wanted to see him lose. Honestly, I thought he was a little overhyped. I, I like Gilbert Burns, um, I so I wanted to see Gilbert beat him. But um, he 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 seems good. He seems kind of scary. He's one of those. Uh, the, he's Russian, right? Uh, yeah, or, he's from Chechnya. Yeah, he's just Russia. He, it's I think right. part of Russia. Yeah. He, he reminds me of just the Khabib guys, and then for me, I kind of prefer fighting strikers just because there's nothing worse than getting out wrestled by a guy or having to or getting caught with a submission. So. Mm. Um, he 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 seems he seems like he's pretty good. I think he's going to do well from here on out. Um, I definitely wanted to see Gilbert Burns um, win that fight, but I think that he he did enough to kind of show that this guy's yeah. not he's not unstoppable. Yeah, it he was pretty. I watched him fatigue and everything. It was pretty close, and also, I mean, there was like the two division champion stuff that I was might have been guilty of saying as well. But after seeing that fight, you got to pump the brakes on it. You realize, like, okay, he's human. He, you know, he gets tired and, um, you can't underestimate Gilbert Burns. That guy is a savage, right? Right. No, it, exactly. And honestly, I'd probably rather fight Hamza than Gilbert Burns. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's in, you know, even with, uh, Hamza, Hamza in the post fight press conference stood up from, from when he got him down, he stood up and he said in there that, you know, he started doing all these like kind of arm bars and triangles. He's like, I was like, I'm going to knock him out is what he said. So I think he didn't like a lot of that rolling around that he was doing. Right. I mean, uh, wrestling and, you know, someone with super dangerous jujitsu, it's not a good, you know, he, it just takes one right. second for him to catch you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to stay down there with him because it's, uh, he's dangerous, very dangerous, and it hits hard. And I think the the style was good to watch because Gilbert's a little shorter, uh, was throwing more hooks, overhands, and everything else. And Hamzat seemed to stay more straight with his punches. And uh, I'm a little shorter for 170, I'd say. You? Just, oh, you five, said 10, 10, 11? Yes, five, yes, 10, sir. 5? Sometimes six. Yes. Yeah, yeah sometimes <laughs> six. Though. But um, most guys, it seems like at welterweight, are six foot or six two. So I'm usually the the shorter guy. So I do enjoy watching shorter guys versus big guys kind of see how they're winning their fights and what approach they're taking to win. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, you, you can look at it too, as uh, it's less of a level change for you, right? If you're a little shorter. Yes. So. That's right. Exactly. Um, but no, it's really cool, man. I mean, end of the day, as I mentioned, right, you got a lot in your plate. I mean, I'm shocked, honestly, to hear that you, you literally have no wrestling background actually. So hats off to your coaches and your hard work for, um, you know, displaying such great wrestling out there. Um, and you know, everyone, everyone's gonna hear it first here, right? End of the day, uh, first Friday in May, then first Friday in May, episode 88, because uh, this Friday is episode 87. But episode 88, I'm doing a breakdown on that knee slide, I have to, um, because it's it's it's, it's crucial, right? You, you need to, have, like I said, you need, like you said, you need to have that good double leg, and you know, you, you gotta have that, uh, that knee slide is that one two punch because you know, you can have a beautiful double leg entry, but once the guy sprawls, if you don't have an answer for it, I mean, especially in MMA, it's gonna be a long day for you. Right. That's, that's exactly right. And um, I know I took one shot in there, uh, a single leg and sat there on my knees. I know my wrestling mm -hmm. coach, if they were watching it, they were sitting there like, get off your knees, drive, circle. Um, yeah. So, and I've always been big on getting your hips in, keeping the back flat on takedowns. Um, not always looking for the lift. I know it looks like I'm always trying to get the lift. It, it looks cool, but um, driving for the takedown finishes. But that's, that's something we drill all the time. Hips in, um, drive, not trying to finish the takedown from your knees. So I think I did made my coaches pretty proud in that fight. Yeah, no, I, I imagine so. And actually, let, so last thing, uh, talking about the lift. So I know lift comes from, you know, especially if you're in like a rear body lock, for example, like a rear clinch, uh, and you want to lift a guy, right, for a mat return. I know it's, you know, it's on the hips, right? You're stepping in, hipping in. Same thing with the double leg. You're trying to get your hips underneath you so you're not truly just using your arms. But is it, you know, when you're fighting in the ring, is it just too fast of a thought process to think about, do I want to tire myself out? I lift it like do you, at any point do you say hey I'm just gonna not try and lift this guy because I'm gonna tire myself out adrenaline I mean do you have that thought process or is it just like hey I don't even think about that yes I have and I'll when I fought D-Rod and I had that loss um, that that was running through my mind because as a pro I had never gone the distance I had one fight as an amateur where I, I went all three mm -hmm. rounds uh, that's a lot different it was a long time ago but I know my, my cardio always holds up I'm one of the hardest workers in the gym I definitely um outwork a lot of guys and that's um the reason that they my teammates gave me nickname pressure is that i'm constantly pressuring forward my cardio is always good um but i will say in the d-rod fight where i lost that first takedown i had him pushed against the cage all that was running through my head is don't wear yourself out don't use mm -hmm. too much energy don't don't look for the lift and then i ended up losing the fight and i still had a full gas tank so mm -hmm. i, I should have just went for it but 
I, I try to take the, the path of least resistance. Um, if the lift is there and I get my hips in right, um, it doesn't take much energy. Um, but if any, if there's an easier route, I'll take that route. What, what are your thoughts as far as like with, uh, I know obviously you're a 10 and three fighter, nobody wants to lose, right. Especially in a, a octagon. Right. But like right. when you do lose, I mean, how important is that? And when you look at like, uh, obviously I, I who's the other guy that goes, uh, Perry, right. Who is, I mean, that's a hell of a guy to lose to, right. I mean, he's, he's a total stud. So like, uh, you know, what is the thought process? I mean, how much have you learned from, you know, okay. Cause I think I, I look at what you did, uh, Saturday night and go, all right, well, if he went against D-Rod again, I feel like, you know, especially, I believe he has a, I forgot if he's left-handed or not, but he has a, he has a nice, um, cross. So I was like, I wonder if you ran that back a couple of times, you know, if you could get the victory, I feel like you probably could. No, I, I, I absolutely believe that I could. And yep, he is left-handed. I, that's, um, I, th that whole fight was just, I was off. Um, I know that's easy to say, but I was definitely not in the same mind frame as I was for this past fight. Um, I was having too much fun with it. I wasn't really there to get in a fight. Um, mm -hmm. I do my best when I'm just thinking, all right, it's, it's, uh, like McGregor said a while back, like in, entering a car crash, you know, you're going to get hurt. Your shins are bare, elbow strikes are allowed. Um, so just be prepared for that and be first. No, you want to hurt the guy before he hurts you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, how do people get, how do people get a hold of you? You got like, uh, do you have, uh, Instagram or, uh, Twitter? What are you using uh, for? Like, I use Instagram. I, I've been on Twitter in a long time, but, um, I have Instagram and it's uh, P underscore Parsons MMA. P underscore Parsons MMA. Yeah. And, and the cool thing is, so, so Mike, I, at my gym that we, we used to be training at Gracie Hamida in San Diego and, and, uh, Mike was the wrestling guy, right. And he's a black belt as well and would compete and win and, and do a lot of really cool stuff. But, uh, Dangerous he was, combination. yeah, he was a very yeah, technical guy. He's very technical guy, very humble. But, um, you know, I just realized like, man, wrestling is so important, right? And all that jujitsu you have, if you can't get somebody to the ground, what are you going to do with all that jujitsu? Right. And so he's been a great resource. He moved to New Jersey. I don't know what city you are in New Jersey, Mike. Um, yeah, I live in Lynnhurst, but my school's in Glen Rock. He's in some place in New Jersey, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, it's just cool. Like, I love that he's doing this, like, um, this, uh, merging of jujitsu and, and wrestling because he did that and now he's doing it with his uh, online thing but i mean I, I get the shorts and the reels that come through and i'll watch him and he has a pretty good uh, presence on instagram but he's super technical like i really enjoy watching his stuff a little little uh, commercial there for you mike but i really do li like like no matter what i'm watching I'm like oh okay i gotta shelf that like i'm i don't know barely anything about wrestling but i i always want to learn more and uh but yeah it's a great resource hey who knows if you're ever in new jersey you can go uh uh track mike down I yeah, was just cool. about to say that it sounds like, um, I need to make a trip up there and get some training in and I'm definitely going to follow the page now because that's, I, I love the breakdowns and, um, I, I appreciate you guys having me on and, and breaking down my takedown too. It's, um, I, I'm, I'm still new to all this and, and the UFC, but I plan on that was, that was a good performance by me, but it's not my best performance. So I'm, I'll, I'll do even better next fight and wrestling will be even more improved then. And hopefully I'll get some work in with you, Mike. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Come down anytime. Uh, I'd love to work with you and get some scraps in. And uh, yeah, like I said, everyone else, episode 88, we're having a breakdown of Preston Parsons and Eastside. So uh, stay tuned. Yeah, we got to yeah, we gotta get you prepped because you're going to be on Rogan soon. So we got to get you get to this like whole podcast thing. I get you dialed in, right? Right. That's right. You know, and I enjoyed I enjoyed talking to you guys. So it was um, nice and relaxed, like you said. And I'm, I'm uh, down to come on and talk to you guys anytime. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, uh, we'll talk to your manager and, you know, let us know when you have your next fight coming up, uh, I do a little bit of, you know, kind of basic like UFC MMA breakdowns and stuff, but definitely want to kind of get it out there when you're fighting next. And, uh, who knows if you fight at apex, maybe we could shoot out there. I live in San Diego, so we can shoot out to Las cool. Vegas, but I've been wanting to, uh, go to, uh, I've been to some events, but I haven't been to the apex. So I'd like to shoot out there and, and I know they have real small crowds out in the apex, totally different vibe than you fought in the apex on Saturday, right? Yes, the my all my UFC fights have been in the Apex, and okay. personally, I I enjoy the crowd. Um, I Apex, especially the first fight, it was real quiet. Um, it didn't really the nerves. I the crowd gives you just enough good nerves for me. Um, mm. and um, having the no crowd just makes it seem, I don't know. Yeah, uh, it, it was a little bit different. I I definitely prefer a crowd. So hopefully, my next fight will be a a pay per view maybe or uh, yeah. somewhere with a stadium.
Yeah. I mean, I think you'd definitely be in the prelims. Uh, I mean, you know, and if you keep doing it, I mean, I'm sure you get in the pay-per-view slot. That'd be pretty awesome. But I mean, you know, I, I think it's just a, a, a number of wins away. And I mean, I think uh, you're probably fairly close to getting a ranked opponent, don't you think? I I, I hope so. I know, again, I, I lost my first fight and then um, I had that that win off of a, a short notice guy. But um, I wish my hand wasn't messed up because I'm I'm ready oh, to yeah. get right back to it. I want to keep this momentum going. Um, I've nothing like winning the UFC fight. That was probably the, uh, the best experience of my life so far. And also being out there training the apex or not the apex, uh, the PI, that was, PI, that was something yeah. else too. Did you see Forrest over there? Yes. Yeah. I, I met Forrest Griffin. Um, he's got that same dry humor that he has on TV and everything. So he's, he was a cool guy. I met Donald Cerrone, uh, Cody Garbrandt, Macy Barber, um, oh, wow. saw a lot of people. So I was, Try not to be too much of a fanboy while I was out there and just focus on it's hard not to the rat. I mean, you know, oh, Forrest yeah, no, is it's... a great example of, of hard work. I know a lot of those UFC guys had really cush jobs working at the UFC. And then when the new management came in uh, with uh, WME IMG, they kind of got rid of a lot of those guys. But, you know, Forrest is there every day grinding out work and getting stuff done. And now he's had this great career because I think he just shows up. You know, I think half of life right. is just, you know, showing up and putting the work in. Right. And, uh, I, you know, it's funny to me, I see a lot of guys who, um, you know, don't know anything about UFC. Uh, my, my dad knows this guy who's like friends with, um, uh, Andre Arlovsky. And he was saying, he met this guy who was like a really famous guy. And, um, he looks at his buddy Pete and he goes like, who's that guy? And he's like, you don't know who that guy is. And it's like one of the guys that's on my wall. Like, you're like, right. you don't know who that guy is. He's like, oh, I don't know. I don't watch, I don't watch UFC. You're like, well, you don't want everybody just people. Uh, and, yeah, and yeah. that's what's cool about meeting them is they, they, there was nothing, I mean, obviously they're, they're cool and they're, they're great people and they've done great things, but there's nothing really spectacular or, or different about them than, than us. Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, it, I, I really like how, I mean, he, I, even like M M McGregor, right. He's just, he's just a normal guy. Right. And it's like, he just, the difference is he has that ability to make you care, right. To get you like pumped for that fight and all those, I do like those shenanigans, even like shoves. I definitely didn't like that Dracar close thing where, uh, he got he got pushed by I think it was Jeremy Stevens, but just the hype, man. When I see uh, a weigh in or something, there's that intensity or whatever. Every now I watch the stare downs and I'll be like, oh man, I gotta watch this fight. This fight's gonna right. be good. No, just, and I I enjoy that too. That I enjoy the stare down. I, I like I like the feeling, actually being in there and, and having that feeling. It's it's a uh, it's it's kind of what got me into this. Like I like that, not not aggressive or not. Um, it's it's hard to describe, but. Um, I do enjoy the face-offs. I enjoy the um, the hostility and all that stuff. And um, after it's all it's all love. After like we're we're all we all have the same dream, but I'm there to win. I'm, I'm always there to to ruin the guy's dream as bad as that yeah. sounds. And, and we can ru we can rule you out of lightweight from here forward. Is that fair to say? Yes, that's fair yeah. to say. I'd say so. I know. I know Dustin. I think Dustin gets up to about 188 and uh, cuts down to 155. And that sounds like a rough cut, man. That's craziness. Yeah. I, I again, I've, I've cut, I've put back on 30 pounds after a weigh in whenever I was fighting at 55. Um, and I still cut a decent amount of, of weight. I cut 15 pounds of water on the, the last day or two. So that's, that's, that's enough. And honestly, during my fights, I've never felt like I have three losses. I've never felt like the reason I lost because I was out over like outpowered or, um, the guy was oversized. So if the guy is uh, five pounds heavier than me, I don't think that's going to be a deciding factor in any fights. Yeah. And the strength isn't, I, I know with Yan, uh, or not with a Yan Aljamain Sterling fight, Al, I actually had bet on Aljamain. And the reason I did is he said he had a really bad weight cut and he said he was in there and he felt like he was, he felt like he was still cutting when he was fighting. And so I was like, I, I have no reason to not believe him. And he had a really poor performance on the first fight against Yan. And then he came back and fought Peter Yan again. And of course he beat him and, uh, it was a little bit controversial, but, uh, uh, what's yeah. funny too, is I, so Mike, I think, um, Mike, you wrestled at what? 147. Uh, 141 in college, three years. So yeah, that was, yeah, it was, it was rough. The last, my biggest cut was my junior year, which was like 38, 40 pounds. And that was bad. Ugh. That was bad. Yeah, that's rough. And you guys have to wrestle same day, don't you? Oh yeah. We, 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 we weigh in, we got an hour and then we warm up. So it's like, yeah. you know, you're trying to control yourself cause you're like <laughs> to get food <laughs> once you weigh in. But yeah, I mean, you eat too much, you're going to want to puke. And so you can't do that. Yeah. And I, I've heard too, yeah. I've heard two people, like a lot of the fighters will say like, when you cut too much weight, like if you go to 155, then it's like your whole camp is just about getting to 155 versus That's like it, yeah. skill acquisition, right? 
Right. Exactly. No, and I'd rather focus on training opposed to the weight cut. Cause I know I can make 170 on a five days notice any, any time. And even right now I've been eating cake and kind of enjoying not, well, I mean, I've been eating so much sweet food and so much food that it's not almost, it's, it's not as enjoyable as everybody makes it out to be. Um, and I got guys fighting yeah. this weekend. Um, so we have seven guys fighting, so I'm kind of not trying to look like a fatty okay. in front of them. This is but even the right now, I'm, card, right? It's no, it's a combat night. Oh, okay. This is more of a, a regional fight. Yes, sir. Yeah. Regional. Okay. Uh, okay no, that makes but. sense. Yeah. I was thinking, uh, yeah. So Mike, anything else you got? Yeah, honestly, I got all my questions answered. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy we got to, you know, we got you on the show, Preston. It was, it was, it was honestly, it was awesome talking with you, uh, learning more about, you know, you, your journey and what you're looking to achieve down the road. And I'm, and, you know, sorry to hear about your hand, but I'm sure after yeah. some, uh, some fixtures and some recovery, you'll, you'll come back stronger than ever. Yeah. Right. No, and it was worth it for the win. I'd, I'd, I'd do it again. <laughs> yeah. Mike's a little disappointed because he thought you were like an Olympic wrestler, probably. So he's just like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> he's got all this material. Like, he's like, wait, well, you didn't wrestle? What the hell? That's you know? right. Yeah, we'll that... something out. And so I, yeah, that... so I guess my last question to you would be just around. So you, with the hand, uh, with the left hand broken. So what are you thinking? I mean, is that, is that like best case six months to, before you're, you're ready to fight again, probably? Um, the doctor yesterday said, uh, eight weeks until I can start training again. And then 12 weeks to start punching again, uh, which is similar to my last, my last, uh, injury on my hand, but I'm going to try to stay in shape, do what I can work a lot of kicks. I can still work my shots and drill a little bit. Um, so I'd say about six weeks, I'll start getting back to grappling and wrestling around a little bit. Um, and hopefully, or definitely I want to fight for the end of the year. Okay. Yeah, no, that would be great. Uh, definitely let us know when you do. And, uh, yeah. I mean, anyone who's not following Preston, please do. Um, you know, and it's been just a pleasure interviewing you. I, I definitely hope, uh, I don't know if you're on the UFC fight game yet. I, I, I used to play that game back in the day, but I'm going to go get the new one, but we got to get you as a character on that, uh, UFC, whatever it is, UFC four, UFC five that they got. Going. That would, that would be awesome. I, that, that'd be like a dream come true for me too, being on the game. And I want to get my, one of those UFC cards too. When I was a kid, I collected uh, football cards and Yu-Gi-Oh oh, cards, yeah. Pokemon cards. I want to get a uh, UFC card with my face on it. No, we got to get a post. You got to get me a poster. If you get a, a poster, you're on a poster. You got to let me know and put it on my wall here. Oh, absolutely. No, I will. Yeah. I, I want to, I want to say like, call it here first. You're hearing, you know, Preston Parson, UFC champion, you know, he's got to get his, his uh, hand healed up, but uh, you guys, Usman, all these other guys better watch out. So yeah, Ben, so, uh, awesome. Awesome. Talking to you. Uh, let me know when you have uh, your next fight. Uh, we'd definitely like to check you out. And, uh, like you said, check out Mike and, uh, if you ever have any questions or anything like that, and, uh, we'll get this up and uh, it's just been a pleasure, man. Sounds good. And I look forward to talking to you guys again. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot guys for joining. It's great. Yeah. Thanks Preston.